Good morning and welcome to my kitchen. Tracy here. Today we are going to be doing some more freezer meals for a stress-free summer. I already have, I did 27 meals last week. I think we went through, we went through a pack of burgers on Father's Day. That night that I made them, we did a cannelloni and we tried the marinated pork. So we've already gone through three. So we have 24 freezer meals downstairs. I'm going to try to do around that again today. Sorry for the background noise. We have a brand new puppy and he is currently dragging a stick around the dining room. I already have my knives sharpened. I have my apron on. I've got a microphone, so hopefully my sound is a little better. Um, I think from using my phone all the time in the garden, the speakers is clogged with dirt. I tried to clean it out, but it's still intermittent at best. Um, I'll grab what we're going to do today. Okay, so I was able to get that really great deal on chicken yesterday. So I have a lot of chicken. So what I did yesterday afternoon, after I got home from groceries, is I cooked off three packages of the chicken breasts. So nine bone-in chicken breasts I cooked off and two pick packages of the bone-in thighs. I just cooked them, let them cool. And then uh, last night after, when I was cleaning up for supper, I just shredded everything. Actually, we ended up eating some for supper last night as well. We just did some chicken wraps. So I shredded everything up. It's in the fridge right now. And what else did I do? Oh, and I skinned and deboned three packages of the chicken thighs. So I bought seven packages of chicken thighs, two I cooked and shredded, three I de-skinned and deboned, but I kept the skins and I kept the bones and they're down in my freezer. And then I kept two packages whole because my husband wants to throw them on the smoker sometime. And that's also a really super easy dinner, weekend dinner. So today I'm going to try to do chicken pot pie, um, a chicken pasta dish. I'm not sure what type of pasta yet. I have to see what I have in the cupboard. And I'm going to do a bechamel sauce. And I have lots of green peas left from last week. So I'm going to throw some green peas in there. And our Swiss chard is going crazy we're eating it every second day and there's still tons of it so i'm going to throw some swiss chard in there as well i'm going to marinate the now boneless skinless chicken thighs i'm going to do a honey garlic and a honey mustard ish marinade so i did the marinated pork last week and cooked one off so what i did when i cooked it off is i just took the meat fried it in frying pan steam some broccoli, steam some, or cook some rice. And while the pork was cooking, which was very, went very quickly since it was already cut up, I just took about a teaspoon of cornstarch and mixed it in the rest of the marinade in the bag. And then I poured that over my pork and then when we had, then it thickened the sauce. So it came out perfect. Marinade meats are a really nice way to go. I wanna do breakfast burritos because we didn't get those last week. And I did buy some sausages yesterday. And then I still have a whole bunch of peppers left from Gateway because they had the 97 cent peppers on last week. So I still have, I think, two, two bags of peppers. So I'm gonna cut up a bunch of peppers and some more of that sausage. And then I'm also gonna add back bacon, which I bought yesterday. And I'm gonna do up like a sausage and peppers to throw in the crock pot. So that's my goal for today. I do have a tentative to-do list. It's supposed to be the warmest day of June today, so let's cook all day, but it doesn't get that hot here. Um, we're very close to the coast, and also our house is mostly in the shade, so. Anyway, so this one I'm gonna do, I'm gonna start slicing up my veggies first. I'm gonna do peppers, onions, carrots. I'm gonna grate some cheese, because I have cheese in the pasta. And also I'm gonna put them on my breakfast burritos. And, then I'm going to make the pie dough. I was going to make pie dough first, but I had my, I keep my butter in the freezer. So I just took it out. It's now, it's a little after eight. It's 8.30 right now. And I only took that out of the freezer around 7 a.m. So I kind of forgot about it. I meant to take it out last night. So by the time I get all my veggies done up, that should be good enough to use to make my pie dough. I'm going to do a triple pie dough recipe because I'm going to try to get six chicken pot pies and each pie dough makes two crusts. All right, let's get started. All right, so as always, I got two bowls in front of me. This is gonna be my chicken scrap bowl. Chickens love peppers. 
My knives are already sharpened. I took out three red peppers and I left those for my salads for the week. And I'll just get chopping and this bowl will all be my chopped peppers. Hi. All right. So I'm going to use my KitchenAid again. I'm going to grate my carrots in here. I'm going to grate my cheese in here. And after I do that, I'm going to make my pondo in here. And I'm going to do two blocks of cheese today, one marble, one matzah. It doesn't really matter to me because I'm going to have quite a bit of cheese in the pasta and then also in the burritos. I'm going to do this quickly and then I got to take this dog for a little walk. Okay, I'm gonna just get the rest of the cheese out of here and then I'm gonna give this a quick wash and I really gotta take this dog for a walk or he is gonna lose his mind. All right, I'm back from our walk. I'm gonna switch to voiceover for the next little bit. Um, there's just too much background noise. <laughs> so I make my pie dough in a mixer. I know not everyone does. I am doing a triple batch, but I'm still doing each batch separately. So in each batch is two and a half cups of flour, about a teaspoon, a teaspoon and a half of salt. And I just mix that up. This is some butter that I didn't quite melt. It's just, it's softened. It's not cold butter. So as you can see, it's still a little bit liquidy, but not majorly. This is what I'm putting in first. So this is um, half a cup. So this is half of the butter that's going in here. And I'm just going to let this coat the flour. This is how I'm able to use it in a mixer without compromising the quality. So I just get all that butter nicely coated onto that flour. So then when I add my cold butter in, it doesn't just get soaked up by the flour. You want some chunks. So this is the cold butter, and I'm just gonna put it in by cubes and let the mixer do the work for me. So I believe this is um, the butter for the next recipe as well. So only half of this is going in. This is another half of cup. So two and a half cups of flour, one cup of butter, and a teaspoon or so of salt. Oh, I must have lied here. This must have been all the butter for this recipe. Okay, so I'm going to fast forward through this part because what I want is the mixer to put incorporate the butter, but I still want it to be a little bit chunky. So I want there to be about dime size chunks of butter left in because when you bake the crust, that's what's going to make it nice and flaky.
So in real time, that was about five minutes. As you can see, there's still some chunks of butter in there and it's mostly incorporated. That's exactly what I want. So I'm just gonna pop this back on the mixer and I'm gonna just put it on the lowest setting. This is water that I've had in my freezer. So it is very cold. And I'm just gonna add about a tablespoon at a time. And I just want to add it until the dough starts to pull away from the sides of the bowl. I think my recipe calls for six tablespoons of ice water, but I find it usually ends up being more like four tablespoons. So as you can see, it's already starting to pull away. This is me making a decision that I'm not gonna add anymore, but I think I'm going to change my mind on that in one minute here. <laughs> so it's starting to pull away, but it's just not quite where I want it. So I'm gonna commit to one little glass jug and there. Now it's pulling away from the sides. So there it is done just like that. This whole process takes maybe seven minutes or so with the mixer and you don't have to do it by hand, which is nice, and you don't get any hand cramps. Of course, you can always make pie dough by hand, but especially when you're doing a triple batch, I just prefer it this way. So I'm going to break this into two and just form them into balls. It's much easier to roll into a circle when you start with a ball, and I'm just gonna set these on a plate and put them in the fridge to cool until I am ready to roll them out. If you leave them at room temperature, that butter is going to melt and then you won't have as flaky of a pie crust. All right, I'm going to get my filling started for my chicken pot pie. So I just have some butter melted in there and I always put my onions in first. Onions take the longest to cook. So I'm just gonna let those cook and then I'm going to get in the rest of my veggies. So after three or four minutes, my onions are now translucent, translucent and starting to brown. So I'm just gonna add in some celery that I chopped up out of the fridge. And those are my grated carrots. I decided to put all my carrots in here. I was gonna put some in the pasta, but I decided to do just the green peas and the Swiss chard in the pasta instead. So all those carrots are going in my chicken pot pies okay so here's all my veggies i've got um onions celery corn carrots and garlic i'm just going to divide it up against amongst my pans i don't have enough of the big pans like i normally do but i do have a bunch of saved pie tins so what i'm going to do is just make them all into the pie tins uh, the only thing is is that i'll have to take two out so every two pie pit tins will count as one meal. All right, I'm gonna get this all divided up and I've got all my chicken over here. My chicken is right over here. All chucked up, that's mostly chicken thighs and a couple chicken breasts. I'm gonna use the chicken, the rest of the chicken breasts in the pasta. I'll get this divided up and then I'll start uh, rolling out pie crust. All right, I'm gonna show you where I'm at. Everything is taking me 10 times as long today because I have to keep stopping to take a dog outside or for a walk or to go play, etc. puppy life. So here are my pot pies. This is equivalent to five dinners because each of these pie plates will be, every two will be one dinner. So we got five chicken pot pies. This is what I normally make them in. So that's us one serving or one meal for us. For the pasta, I did noodles, chicken. There's a lot of peas in there as well. I was gonna put Swiss chard in, but I don't think I have room in here. So I'll just have that as a side dish with it. So we got three for the freezer, and then that's what we're gonna have for supper tonight. Now I'm just gonna start over here, and I'm gonna make a white sauce, and then coat them in cheese. Roll up my pie dough for these. These are just cooling. And I did throw the rest of that rice 
in here. I just split it up amongst them. They may have a couple of tablespoons of rice per pie. All right, so we'll go over and make our white sauce, and we'll add that to our pasta dishes and top them with cheese, and then I'll see what I'm up to next. All right, voiceover Tracy is back because there is a dog barking in the background. So in this pot, I have half a cup of butter melting. This is gonna be my white sauce and my tech sort of a bechamel sauce, but I'm not quite doing it how I'm supposed to. I'm gonna add, I have a liter there of blend that I bought for my mom's house. My mom's on vacation, so I wanna use that up. Um, but I don't actually need it's only about half full and I actually do want to add four cups of liquid to this. So I'm going to just fill the rest of that curtain with water. So for half a cup of butter, I'm adding half a cup of flour and I'm just going to stir this all in. You want it to be well incorporated and then you're going to cook it for a few minutes just to get that taste of the flour out and to make sure so I just added half at a time, I guess I should mention that. So add the first half, get it all stirred in, add the second half, stir it in. And then once it's all incorporated, we're going to let that sit on the stove top for about five minutes just to really cook out that flour taste. All right, I'm just slowly incorporating the cream. This was about half full, so I actually just added, topped it up with water. This is... 10%, so that'll be fine. All right, I'm just gonna keep incorporating this. And I stir pretty constantly. You don't want any lumps. So it's pretty thick already. And I just have this on low heat. Once I get all the uh, cream incorporated. I'll turn the heat up a little so bit. Let's go back from another walk. Oh my gosh, and my kitchen is such a mess. So I have my pasta done with my cheese on top. My shepherd's pie is done and cooling. And my pie dough, I just took it out of the fridge. It's resting over there and I roll it out. But first, I'm going to get some sausage going. Everything's taking a lot longer because I have to keep taking extended breaks. So it's 5 to 12 right now. I'm seeing what I'm gonna get done. So I have three packages of these. I'm gonna put half, I'm gonna take out of the casing and I'm just gonna fry in this pan for my breakfast burritos. And then the other half are just gonna go in the air fryer and they're gonna get chopped up and put in my sausage and peppers. So we'll get started on that right now. All right, now that I am getting my sausage in the pan, I thought I'd mention, I just looked back at my footage and the, white sauce that I did I ended up um, so you just add the cream until it's thickened and then I added some salt and I also added two cubes of garlic this is why I'm calling it a white sauce and not a bechamel sauce anymore because of the addition of garlic but I can't have pasta without garlic the only note I'm going to make to myself um, we actually cooked one of those for supper last night and I think I need about double the amount of sauce. So I put like a cup and a half of sauce per pan. And I think probably closer to three cups of sauce would be better. So I'm just squeezing, here I'm just squeezing the sausage out of the casing. I want this um, to be crumbled up for my burritos. So I'm just cooking this now before lunch and I want this to cool before I assemble my burritos because I don't want to do it hot because then it could potentially rip the tortilla. So I'm gonna cook these here and then I'm going to cook my eggs. I think I ended up cooking 16 eggs, so about one egg per um, burrito we have a real surplus of eggs right now so that is why I'm doing an egg dish all right so I'm gonna get this cooked up my other sausages are already in the air fryer and when I come back I believe I will be assembling my next dish all right I am relaxed and back from lunch back on schedule I just labeled four of these medium-sized freezer bags I put add tomato and spices and the date 
Um, I do have some homegrown canned tomatoes downstairs on my canning shelf. However, I didn't think there was any point in opening something that's already shelf stable just to put it in a bag, to put it in a freezer. It uh, takes no time at all to open a can and they're already ready to go. So I'm just going to add that when I cook and also just adding my spices at that time as well. And then I can do it to taste. There's not really any way to taste this until it's all combined. So I just split up that back bacon amongst the four packages and then there's seven sausages I cooked in the air fryer and just sliced up. I'm just gonna divvy that up amongst the four bags. And then I have my bowl of sliced peppers there and I'm gonna divvy that up amongst the four bags. This will be a nice quick meal. I can just either throw it in a cast iron skillet or um, put it in the crock pot and then I'll have uh, dinner ready to either serve over rice or egg noodles or even put in a wrap. So another four freezer meals ready for the summertime. And when I put these in the freezer, I'm just going to freeze them on a tray so they stay nice and flat. And then when I can stack them a lot easier, if you freeze them flat like this, then you can kind of store them upright. It just saves a lot of freezer space. Moving on to my marinated chicken, I'm gonna do two honey garlic chicken thighs and I'm gonna do two honey mustard chicken thighs. So these were the ones that I had bought the day before and what I just did that evening was I deboned them. Um, chicken thighs are very easy to debone. It's one bone, It they take maybe 20 to 30 seconds per thigh. And then you can obviously just pull the skin off. It's it's a very quick process, so don't let bone-in thighs intimidate you. I know they're much more expensive to buy already done for you, but it's super, super simple. So I'm just writing on each bag what's going in it and the date, and then I'm gonna divvy up the thighs amongst the bags. So I'm putting seven chicken thighs per package and that's equal to probably about 900 grams, so two pounds per package. I didn't actually weigh them um, this time, I usually do, but I just it just worked out to be seven per, so that's what I went with. Um, when I was doing the pork, uh, we actually ate all of that. I only put 300 grams of pork and it just wasn't enough for us. We, as a main um, element to a dish, because we just did rice and some steamed veggies, uh, we ate that pork and the kids were looking for more. So I decided with the chicken thighs, I would do 900 grams per bag. So triple what I have in the bags of pork. And that way, if we, ha I, if we have leftovers, we can just um, use the chicken for sandwiches the next day or leftovers or whatever. I'm not worried about having too much chicken, especially where I got such a good deal on these chickens. I don't mind cooking a little, little extra. So I'm getting my marinades ready for my chicken. I believe I'm gonna do the honey mustard first. Yeah, there's my big, big jug of mustard. I know most people put Dijon mustard in their honey mustard marinade. However, I don't particularly like Dijon mustard. So I put in two pucks of garlic, that's my homegrown garlic that I just freeze in the ice cube trays, which I'm almost out of, which is in a way good because I will soon have garlic coming in. So I'm doing equal parts of lemon juice, honey, and mustard. This is the very last of these little discount honeys I had. Um, that's one reason I wanted to use these up in marinades today. That's why they both have honey in them. So I had two jars with just a little bit in it. You don't need to heat up your marinade. Um, however, where the honey is getting a bit old and it's quite crystallized. And then I also had the frozen garlic. So I just um, have this on quite low. I think I have it on like two or three. So for the honey garlic, I'm doing three pucks of that garlic. So that's close to 100 grams of garlic. And then equal parts, honey, soy sauce, and ketchup. I'm not a huge fan of ketchup. 
but every recipe I found online had ketchup in it, so I just kept it in for the consistency. Next time, I might use barbecue sauce or even just tomato paste and uh, when I have a little more time to taste. I'll just point out, too, that I'm letting these cool before I add them to my chicken. All right, so I'm moving on to my burritos. I thought I was filming this before. This is actually my second batch of these wraps on the counter. So I'm using up all everything pretty much that I have left. I don't think I end up using all my cheese though. So it's just sausage and scrambled eggs and a little bit of cheese on top of a tortilla. And then we're just gonna wrap them up, up and put them on a cookie sheet. And I freeze froze these on the cookie sheet and then when they were, I don't know, three quarters frozen, I just took them out and popped them in a couple bags. This made 15 um, burritos, so that should be three meals for us. But if we just decide just grown-ups want one or whatever, they're individually frozen, so we can just grab what we want on the day. All right, so I am finally getting out to rolling out this dough. As you can see, it's still pretty stiff. It's been, even though it's been sitting on the counter for quite a while, I think I might've refrigerated it too long. I'm not gonna lie, this day got a little frustrating. Um, I really underestimated the, <laughs> the sheer volume of attention a new puppy needs. I knew how much it did, and it's not like I haven't been doing it for the last few days. But when I'm trying to concentrate on doing lots of tasks, um, and of course he wants to be in on all the action. So barring all that, and after I regrouped, uh, it is time to get these pies covered. I take a real uh, lazy fair approach to making <laughs> pie. I do not worry about what it looks like. It's all going to cook up and be delicious. Uh, all my kids and my husband like a nice thick crust on the edge, so I do tend to over um, do it a little bit, and I just cut a couple slits in there for when I bake it so that uh, the steam can escape. And also, I ended up making, instead of six pies, I made 11 because I only had the pie dishes. I didn't have the larger casserole dishes, and I knew I was out of those as well but I just didn't plan ahead but it all worked out so I just had to split up some of my dough balls into two or take a third off just to make um, extra crust to roll out uh, this what what this crust did roll out really nicely and I you know probably can't see it on camera but there are some chunks of butter in there so when it bakes up it should still be nice and flaky So this is my last circular pie crust. I am attempting to make it pretty just to see if I can. So I tried to cut it out in a circle and I didn't quite cut it evenly around. And then I'm trying to make the crust even and I fail at that as well. Um, I think it's just part of who I am. I am definitely a function over form person I realize I've hit a hole there so I'm just shoving a little piece of dough in but you know what we have a saying around this house good enough for the girls I go with hi sweetie thanks for all your non-help today all right so here we have it so I made we end up getting one two three four pasta bakes this is going to be for supper tonight we got one two three four five suppers of chicken pot pie 
these are just separated into two, but they do both have the crest. So what are we at? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13. So we get two of the honey mustard chicken thighs and two of the honey garlic chicken thighs. We got four packages of sausages and onions, or no, sausages and peppers. And then we got 15 breakfast burritos. So that's three meals there, but I'm just gonna freeze them like this and then put them into a big freezer bag and we'll just pull them as we want them. So three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, and even 20 freezer meals today. So not too bad at all. I was just looking at my aluminum foil and I was like, oh, I'm almost out. Oh no, I probably only have, you know, 20 more uses or something. And because I usually mark on my containers, I bought this August 2013. So this has lasted me 11 years and it'll probably last me until next year as well. Anyway, just funny, sometimes it is much more worth it to buy the great big packages. If you made it this far, thank you so much for watching. Thanks for tuning in. So I have 20 more meals for the freezer. My freezer is busting full, so I am not gonna do another freezer meal cook-off next week. I'm gonna use what we have first, and probably sometime in the summer, I will buy another 10 pound bag of the lean ground beef because I would like to do up more hamburgers. We have six packages in there right now. We've already eaten one. That's just not gonna last the summer for us. Thank you so much for watching. If you found this interesting, feel free to like and subscribe or leave me a comment. And you have a great day and a wonderful summer.